Hi, Robin Beaumont here. This is YouTube clip, multiple regression one. It's a practical supplement to chapter two of Michael Campbell's superb little book, Statistics at Square Two. And we're going to look at how to carry out some of the examples he gives in that chapter in SPSS, R Commander and R. Just uh, the revision. Remember that multiple regression is where you have one or more input variables shown here on the right. And on the left, we have one outcome variable which must be interval or ratio type. So here's some data that Campbell gives. And we've got dead space, which is amount of dead space in the lungs, which is our outcome variable. So we're saying that is affected by certain inputs. And the inputs in this instance are height, asthma status, age, and bronchitis status. So I've coded asthma as zero equals they don't have asthma one they do have asthma the same bronchitis zero if they don't have asthma one if they do interesting thing to note is that besides dense space which is interval ratio variable which it must be we also have height and age as interval ratio data and we also have asthma and bronchitis as nominal variables so we've got a mixture of types of variables there as the input variables there is a way of classifying these regression models, and I just want to mention it in case you read some other books. If they're all nominal input variables, then it's called some type of ANOVA. It might not just be called ANOVA, it might be called a factorial ANOVA, or what have you, and we'll call that in another session. Where you have one or more nominal variables, input variables, and one or more interval ratio input variables, then it's called an ANCOVA and that is of covariance. And if they're all interval ratio input variables, then it's just usually called standard multiple regression. Campbell calls all these three types of model multiple regression, which is fine. It's just I mentioned these other terms because they're used in older texts. So let's look at some examples. Following this general outline that we have one or more input variables of any type, but we always have the output variable there. The dependent variables it's called in some contexts is always interval or ratio type data. So the simplest example we've got is dead space, which now is interval ratio data, tilde height plus age. That's tilde height plus age. Tilde I've used because it's the sign we use in R when we write in the R function for the model, which we've done in the past and we'll do again. The tilde means is modeled as a functional. So we're saying here the dead space is modeled as a function of height plus age. Similarly, we could say dead space is modeled as a function of asthma plus height plus asthma interaction height. That colon means asthma interaction height. Similarly, we could say dead space is, is a function of asthma plus bronchitis. So we could use various models to try and predict the dead space. Also in R, you can show models different ways. So if you just put dead space tilde asthma star height, it would actually mean asthma plus height plus that interaction term asthma and height. We'll come back to that when we actually do the um, example and you'll see what it means exactly. So we have there standard linear regression because both those independent variables or input variables rather are interval ratio. Then we have here an ANCOVA style multiple regression because asthma is a covariate, it's nominal data. And here we have two nominal variables, so it's a particular type of ANOVA called a factorial ANOVA, which we'll talk about in another YouTube video. But we'll analyze it using regression, which is fine in this tutorial. So things to consider in the output when we do this analysis quickly. First of all, the model assumptions. Then model fit, the adjusted R square, which you come across in simple regression. And then the parameter estimates and the p-values associated with each of those and the confidence intervals associated with them as well. And finally, the effect size measures. We look at these four things because they each give us a different view of what we're considering. First of all, the model assumptions. Well, that tells us if actually we're not putting in rubbish, we put in rubbish, and we're going to get out rubbish anyway. So, one of the most important model assumptions with multiple regression is this thing called 
collinearity. And that is where you have a situation with high correlation between the various input variables. If you've got high correlation between the input variables, it can cause problems with our output. And we'll be looking at that when we carry out the analysis. Model fit. Well, first of all, we want to know, does the model fit the data any better than the overall mean? If it doesn't fit it any better than the null model, the overall mean, we can basically forget it. And remember, we do that basically by looking at the adjusted R square and the p-value associated with that. Then we have the parameter estimates, our betas and b's. And that tells us if the betas and b's using the p-values or confidence intervals are statistically significant. Are the parameter values any better than the zero? And finally, even if we might accept them as being statistically significant, they might actually have very small effect size measures. So we're saying it's the difference of any practical clinical value. And when we talk about linear and multiple regression, we're actually talking about is the slope steep enough? So we'll get on now with our first example. Dead space is modeled by height plus age. So here we are in SPSSS. We want to simply carry out the regression analysis as described by Campbell. So we analyze regression linear. And a dependent variable is dead space. And there are two independent variables, input variables this time are height and age. Now if we click on statistics, we can add a selection of options here. We've got the estimates, which are our betas. I'd like some confidence intervals as well for each of those. A model fit, I'd like descriptors, and I'd like the part and partial correlations. Reason for these is because it tells us the unique um, a contribution each variable makes, input variable. You'll see when we get the results. And we'll choose collinearity diagnostics as well. Continue. OK, and here are the results. For an explanation of what this output means, simply look at my handout. My handout describes the output in detail, each value. I'll just mention one thing in the hand output now. If we look here, we have a significant p-value, f-value here for the model. It's point, less than 0 0.0001. So we would expect to have a significant beta value, one or more. We go down and we look at our beta values. And there's the p-values. And neither of them are significant if we take the critical value to be 0 0.05. So what is going on? Well, it's to do with this problem of collinearity. And that's why I asked for the collinearity diagnostics here. And these values, what they mean, explained in the handout, and also independent variables, they found that they had a very high correlation value. I think it's something like 0.8. Again, look at my handout. How to deal with that problem is also discussed in the handout. In R, we load R commander to begin with, library R commander. Once we have the R commander interface, We'll load the data by using import data from SPSS data file. Call it my data frame. We don't want to convert value labels to factor levels. Select the file we need. Check to see we've got the data in by view data set option at the top. Here we are, subject number, first column, second column, dead space, height, asthma, age, bronchitis, exactly the same as in SPSS, close that window. Right, what I should have done before I carried out the regression analysis in SPSS was actually a scatter matrix, some scatter plots. So we can do this very easily in our commander, graphs, scatter plot matrix, graphs, scatter plot matrix, and select our three variables. Dependent variable is dead space. And then we have height and age as our independent variables. These are listed alphabetically, so we just remember them. Age. And then press the control key. 
get the dead space and height. We don't want wiggly lines, we want smooth lines, we just want the straight line, these squared lines, and we'll have a box plot of each variable along diagonal. Press OK. There are the results. So if we look here, we've got age, dead space, and height, and they give little box plots of each of the variables. But if we look at age and height, we can see that they're very close to the line. It's a very high correlation there, and we don't want that between the independent variables, the input variables. We want a high correlation between the dependent variable and a combination of all the independent variables, and not between the actual independent variables themselves. So this probably means there's going to be trouble ahead, as we know there is from our SPSS output. Now we'll do the regression analysis in our commander. So I'll close that window. The R command window, statistics, fit models, linear regression. Call it model one. And we know the response variable, the output is dead space, and the inputs are age and height. Age and height, press the control key. OK. And here are the results. So we've got the parameter estimates for age and height and the intercept there, exactly the same as in SPSS with the p-values at the end. Then we have our multiple r-squared, ingested multiple r-squared, and the f-statistic and its p-value there, exactly the same as in SPSS. Also we can see here what's selecting that option in our command produced in our code. And it's very similar to what we did in the first linear regression, simple linear regression YouTube video. So all it's done is added another variable plus height. If I go up here, I can show you directly how that works. First of all, we make sure we attach our data set. We call it my data frame. And then if we type summary. Then we had linear model, bracket, dead space, tilde, is modeled as a function of age plus height. And two closed brackets, send those two commands off to R. We get exactly the same as we had before. So we could have done that directly in R instead of using R commander. So that is it. This is the first of the YouTube videos on multiple regression where we looked at two interval ratio inputs and we analyzed them in SPSS R Commander and indirectly into R by using the linear modeling command syntax. Next time we're going to look at a slightly more complex model where we have input variables of two types, nominal and interval ratio data. So when we have this situation, we have two types of input variables. It's called an ANCOVA analysis, analysis of covariance, and the nominal variables are covariates. 